Yeah. Well. Okay. Well, I think we can and uh, should start. Uh, good morning, everybody. We are close to 50 participants, which is um, very nice to see. Um, I'm the facilitator of today's uh, webinar, but I will refrain from any introduction um, of the event. For this, we have the uh, speakers here today. Just um, very briefly about myself. My name is Dominic Otto. I'm the deputy CEO of the German Baltic Chamber of uh, Commerce. I would like to thank everybody here who has joined, who will act actively participate um, in the event today, but also, of course, welcome all the attendees who are eager to learn more about the IT opportunities in Germany, especially in Nordrhein-Westphalia. And with this, I would like to hand over to um, our CEO of the German Baltic Chamber of Commerce, Mr. Florian Schröder. Florian, please, the floor is yours. Yeah, good morning, everybody. Um, uh, it's really a pleasure for me. I, I hope the sound is okay. If not, make some funny faces. Um, it's, it's really a pleasure and honor for me um, uh, to have uh, the opportunity to, to speak and welcome you. Um, and I will also say a few reasons why it is such an honor. Um, but first, um, yeah, welcome um, to uh, Felix Neugart, the CEO of uh, NRW Global Business, and um, our today's speakers, uh, Lena. Uh, Weigelin from the Ministry of Economy, Innovation and Digitalization of the state of uh, North Rhine-Westphalia. I also welcome uh, Tavi, hello, uh, Tere, uh, and uh, our dear friend Elena Matekina, who has been a long partner and a very became a good friend over the time and um, is one of the cornerstones of the cooperation um, with us and the Chamber Network. I also welcome Mr. Schneider and uh, Christian Schmickler uh, from the Cyber Security Cluster in, in Bonn. And um, I'm, I'm very happy that we have such a high turnout and that shows that actually the format is, um, is accepted. Mm. Uh, of course, it would be um, maybe even nicer to meet in, in real uh, world like we did to the uh, Digital Baltic Summit a couple of years ago, where uh, uh, Professor Pinkwart was so kind to be our uh, patron and opened it. Um, and so there's a, a long uh, history uh, of very active and deep cooperation between North Rhine-Westphalia and the Baltics. And uh, yeah, please allow me a, a personal remark uh, to me, the region of North Rhine-Westphalia is also uh, dear to my heart because I lived there for five and a half years in a smaller town between Dortmund and Bochum called Witten and uh, uh, spent some time there uh, in university. And uh, I, I have it uh, as a very sweet memory and me as a original Berliner, I felt um, uh, very uh, quickly at home in, in North Rhine-Westphalia. Um, people are kind of um, a bit, um, let's say there's a bit of tough love going on, but uh, there's a bit, uh, there's always not a bit, but huge heart uh, in it. And um, that makes it also similar um, to the Baltic states. Um, and um, uh, so I, I think there's a, a bit of a, a cultural uh, fit here um, and uh, that's not so unimportant when you do business. Um, I want to thank uh, Elena uh, and um, uh, our partner uh, NRV Global uh, Business for making this uh, possible and I also want to thank Dominic and Maris from my team to put in so much effort uh, to, to find the right partners and uh, to, to pull it off. Um, so yeah, uh, in the coming days, we're going to have uh, lots of um, uh, meetings. We, we target about 60 meetings uh, in total. Um, and um, yeah, as you know, we as the Chamber uh, IHK of the Baltic States, we are there for making cooperation happen in, in both ways. Yeah, we believe that trade is a is a win-win um, uh, thing and it has to uh, be um, 
beneficial for both sides. And therefore we so not only support the German companies coming to the Baltics, but taking also Baltic companies to Germany uh, together with our partners. And that's exactly why we're here today. And, um, um, and I, I think this is a, is, a, is a great concept and has been proven successful worldwide. Um, yeah, we have um, about 400 members in the Baltic states uh, in Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania. We are by far the largest international uh, chamber uh, there. Um, and um, yeah, for us, uh, the Corona um, pandemic uh, has been also uh, hugely affecting our business and the way we do business. And that's also my, my first uh, thesis of my small little um, talk today. Um, is that this uh, pandemic is like a catalyst for digitalization. So, and I think that's what we experienced everybody. And um, that um, will um, make, um, um, that will put the Baltic states, which are already ranking in, in many um, aspects uh, in the top five in Europe uh, or even on, on a, a more global scale, uh, they will uh, be uh, further ahead. And also it showed how quickly they adapted to the uh, Corona um, pan pandemic situation. Um, home office was not a problem and including all governments. Um, and um, yeah, that's been a different experience in, in, in Germany. And also the school system um, was extremely well prepared um, in all three countries uh, having digital systems in place and uh, and so yeah I'm, I'm sure you've heard about all the um, famous examples of uh, e-Estonia and I think um, Tavi will tell us a bit uh, later about it uh, where in Estonia are 99 percent of all possible public service online yeah minus um, buying a house and uh, getting married um, in Latvia and Lithuania situation is very similar um, and Latvia introduced last year the first uh, Europe uh, country for online notary service. And um, yeah, and all, all three countries have the, the school platforms, uh, not only for like notebook, uh, like a board, blackboard, but like really for interaction. And there is really teaching online done uh, as well. Yeah. Um, we in a chamber, we can also say that um, uh, we um, adapted quite uh, easily um, for, for the pandemic. Uh, we were ready. We have a very nice uh, CRM system and uh, we, we even used the, uh, the, the crisis time to introduce a, a, an own um, app. Uh, so we have now an own social media app uh, where our uh, all our events are held as a platform and then also has the opportunity to network directly and to uh, access basically all the membership benefits um, uh, on your uh, mobile phone. Um, yeah, one topic where you can also see uh, how innovative and uh, really interesting business-wise the Baltics is the cybersecurity. Uh, and that was the topic also of our last year's uh, German Baltic Business um, Award, which, by the way, won a Lithuanian company called Nord uh, VPN Nord Security. Uh, as uh, many people know it in, in Germany, I even used it, uh, but I wasn't aware that it actually comes from uh, Lithuania. Um, yeah, and that's, um, I can also say uh, today is our release of our new edition of our Baltic Business Quarterly. And um, as you see, the cyber security is a big, um, uh, big topic there. And um, yeah, you can say it started uh, with, with E-Estonia. Uh, and since 2007, um, they actually applied a blockchain uh, principle in the E-Estonia um, infrastructure. And at that time, I think in, in Germany, I first time I heard blockchain was 2014 or something. Yeah. Um, 
Estonia takes the third, Lithuania the fourth place in the um, cybersecurity index. Um, so that's very high, I think. Um, and um, and we, yeah, I think there's a, a huge growth in the market. So that's also interesting. Uh, and, and Germany is, is a bit behind uh, there. It's really a, a big catch up yeah, uh, to do. And there I see a huge potential for partnerships um, uh, from both our regions. Yeah. Um, um, I actually uh, uh, want to uh, close by saying um, North Rhine's failure is, is an excellent stepping stone for the Baltic companies because it's a huge region, it has 18 million uh, inhabitants. Some say the Ruhr region is the largest city uh, in Europe, yeah, because in fact, uh, when you start in Dortmund and drive to uh, the uh, west side of Düsseldorf, it appears as one big city. Yeah, you, it, um, uh, of course, there's a bit of green in between, but um, uh, there's even like an S-Bahn um, going from uh, Dortmund, yeah, uh, over Essen, uh, Bochum. And, um, and it is also a region of transformation. Mm, so um, it is a, it's a region where people are, are open-minded, I would say, in Germany. Because they are very pragmatic, um, and um, and we have a, a very a nice uh, government there in place. Who is uh, and and I had the pleasure of working with uh, Minister Pinkfeld personally. I can only say he's really um, one of the smart people in in the German government who understands what is needed uh, to for Germany to succeed in the twenty first century and to to push the digitalization of our huge industrial nation forward. And so um, I think we are here uh, in open and friends uh, are, uh, and uh, it's a great, great pole position for starting the cooperation. Uh, and that is what I wish to everybody who is listening now. Um, I wish you a successful talks and a huge added value which you can create. I, I wish that lots of new even companies are maybe established um, and that uh, um, uh, new ideas will be realized and that we, yeah, to all our benefit, um, uh, move this forward. Thanks for your attention and um, good luck and stay healthy. Thank you very much, Florian, for this overview of the uh, Baltic States. And with this, I would like to hand over to Felix Neugard, the CEO of um, NRV Global Business. And yes, please, Felix, it's your turn. Thank you so much, um, dear um, Dominic Otto. And thank you also, Florian Schröder, for your kind introduction, not only for um, um, revealing your North Rhine-Westphalian identity. I, I didn't know about that. And uh, alerting us to the um, cooperation potential between uh, North Rhine-Westphalia and the Baltic states in many areas. Um, I would like to welcome you all here in this webinar also on behalf of NRW Global Business, the trade and investment agency of the state of North Rhine-Westphalia to our event today, digital event, of course, IT business opportunities in Germany with a focus on North Rhine Westphalia. And Florian Schröder has already um, mentioned that this event, this uh, cooperation, builds on previous cooperation, excellent cooperation between the Chamber and the Baltic States, the AHK, and uh, the, the NRW Invest and the NRW International companies over the last uh, couple of years. And these two companies actually were merged in November last year to form a new trade and investment agency of our state, North Rhine Westphalia, the NRW Global Business. And I'm CEO of this, this company also since November um, last year. And we offer tailor made services for companies. On the one hand, inbound, we support or we attract and support investors 
from um, abroad to Northern Westphalia, but we also support companies from Northern Westphalia to access global markets with our export promotion um, 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 program. Northern Westphalia, and I'm sure you're aware of this, is Germany's economic powerhouse. We are the largest state in Germany, and we have been one of the most popular investment locations in Europe, not only in Germany, over the last couple of years. Let me give you just a glimpse into what we have to offer in Northern Westphalia. We are Germany's leading region in terms of GDP, gross domestic product, over 700 billion euros. And this is the largest of all German states. We generate over 20% of the overall German GDP. We are also, and I think this is also West well known, the Ruhr region has already been mentioned by Florian Schröder. We are the industrial heartland or the industrial heartland of Germany. 18 of the 50 biggest German companies are based here and our industrial companies generate also almost 20% of all industrial sales in Germany. But we are also looking into the future. We have a huge um, 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 focus on IT and software business. Almost 25,000 ICT businesses are based in Northern Westphalia and they employ almost 230,000 people. This is also the first, uh, number one in Germany. No other federal state here has a similar density of IT companies and IT talent. This is, I think, a fourth uh, factor which we should mention here. We also consider ourselves to be a talent pool. We have 70 universities here, 70 universities here in North Westphalia with almost 800,000 students. And among these 800,000 students, one tenth, this means 80,000, is in the fields or is studying uh, in the fields of electrical engineering, information, information technology, computer science. And this is also, I think, a very broad um, 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 talent pool for companies in the IT sector. And last, but by no means, no means least, we have a very dynamic, dynamic startup scene. Every fifth startups again in Germany comes from North Rhine-Westphalia. Some well-known names such as Trivago, Bitstars, or Cumulosity. And we are also an attractive location for international startups coming from abroad to start their international business here in North Rhine-Westphalia, such as Orcam from Israel and QD Laser from the US. And uh, the reason or the background for this is that our strong industrial structures in combination with an innovative IT sector and a lot of IT talent make NRW an ideal um, location for uh, companies who want to develop um, um, in the digital economy and cover and scale up to the entire value chain. And in this context, I believe that uh, the Baltic states have become increasingly important partners for NRW, and this was already alluded to. Um, we have endeavored in close cooperation with the chamber to drive forward our bilateral cooperation. Um, the NRW share in Germany's trading volume um, with, with, with the Baltic states is, um, is all, all above average, 20% with Lithuania and 15% with Estonia and Latvia. And of course, and this has been already mentioned, we attach great um, um, importance to digital innovation. And the Baltic states, of course, are very good, a very valuable partner in this regard when it comes to e-government, when it comes to many other um, 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 applications of digital uh, technology. And uh, the, actually the very first visit of our current minister, uh, Andreas Pinkwart, who is not only the minister of economics, but also the minister of digitalization. And I think uh, in this capacity, a well-known figure, not only here in North Westphalia, but also across Germany, his first visit abroad was to Estonia in 2017, focusing on the startup ecosystem and projects in e-government. And together with Florian Schröder and the HK, we, has, we have um, 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 implemented the first German Baltic Digital Summit. Um, 
with 300 guests um, and we discussed uh, many topics around the digital um, um, field like, like digital administration, cybersecurity and smart cities. And um, as I already mentioned, one of our main tasks as NRW Global Business is to assist companies from abroad to come here to North Westphalia to set up a shop here, to invest here. And in this capacity, um, we see more and more IT software companies coming from the Baltic states, coming from Estonia, from Latvia and Lithuania to, um, to show interest, to expand into North Northern Westphalia. And we are of course happy and very eager to support these companies in their settlement and to secure a smooth start here in North Rhine Westphalia. And one of these companies, let me mention this, is the company Nortal, which is one of uh, Estonia's largest software developers and significant, significantly, I believe, involved in the country's digital transformation. And in 2018, Nortal opened its first office here in Germany, in Düsseldorf, the capital of North Rhine Westphalia. And we were very um, and proud and, and happy to assist Nortal in this endeavor. On the other hand, we have also many companies from North Rhine Westphalia who are active in the Baltics, big household names like Bayer, Hohe Heller, and of course, a large number also of smaller companies. We in North Rhine Westphalia are also um, a home to the famous German Mittelstand, the small and medium sized German companies, um, um, hidden champions, as we call them, who are very um, innovative, very um, 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 leading in, in their respective sectors and very successful also on a global scale. And therefore, we are very, or it's, it's very important to us to bring these two together. On the one hand, innovative companies from the Baltic countries, innovative startups, and also um, larger companies and uh, German Mittelstand companies who are in the process of digital transformation. And against this background, I think I'm very positive, I'm very optimistic about the perspective for our mutual cooperation. And I'm looking forward to our event today um, um, and to discuss and to deepen our insights into the potential that this, um, that the, that this partnership um, has to offer. So let me thank you again, Florian Schröder, our partners from HK and others uh, for joining hands with us. Um, in this endeavor, and I wish us all a very um, fruitful digital event. And actually, we just talked about this in the in the in the beginning. I sincerely hope that at some point in the not too distant future, we will be again be able to meet physically and to continue our uh, discussion and our cooperation. Thank you very much, and take care. Thank you very much, Felix, for these very warm um, welcome words. Um, before we now move on with the uh, topic related agenda points, I would like to use this opportunity to remind everybody that we have also the chat function here. I'm pretty sure that all the speakers today um, would be happy to answer one or two questions after their respective uh, presentations. Of course, we also have a Q&A session in the very end of this meeting. But if you have some questions directly related to the topics of our speakers, then please feel free to use the chat function. So now I would like to welcome Lena Weigelin from the Ministry of Economy, Innovation, Digitalization and Energy um, of the Federal State of North Rhine Westphalia. And Lena, please, we are very eager to hear about the digitalization in North Rhine-Westphalia. Lena, please. Yes, uh, I will try to, um, thank you very much. Uh, good morning to everyone. Um, I will try to share my, um, my presentation. Um, I hope this will work out now. So hopefully you can see um, the presentation. Yes, uh, see. If not, yeah, okay. Yeah, thank you very much um, for the invitation to um, this webinar today. Um, as you already mentioned, my name is Lena Weigelin and I'm working for the Ministry of Economic Affairs, Innovation, Digitalization and Energy of the state of Northern Australia. And um, I'm working in the unit uh, for uh, the information and telecommunications uh, industry and cybersecurity in the private sector. Um, 
in my presentation today, I will uh, have a, um, yeah, a view on the uh, NRW ICT economy, um, which is um, one of the most important uh, sectors here in NRW. You can see um, that we have a leading role in uh, terms of sales companies and jobs in the important uh, sector. Um, in 2018, the ICT sector generated sales of 127 million euros, 20% more than in 2017. Um, yes, I'm aware that that these figures are from the pre-crisis period, but um, yeah, as you um, probably know, um, there are a lot of studies that say that the industries that went into the crisis strong will also come out of it strong. Out of it strong. And um, as uh, Florian Schroeder mentioned in his uh, in his welcome speech, um, um, the crisis is uh, kind of a catalyst for digitalization, and uh, I think that's um, the very uh, reason for um, for uh, yeah stronger uh, for a stronger ICT branch um, in our future um, in NRW as well as uh, yeah, all over the world, I think. No other federal state in Germany boasts a similar density of ICT enterprises, ranging from SMEs, software startups, um, and uh, telecom giants. We have got nearly 25,000 companies from that sector here located. And yes, they are the driver of digital transformation and drives the further development um, of, uh, of the economy. To give a few examples for uh, for um, companies located here in NRW, we have got yeah um, Deutsche Telekom and Vodafone. Um, we have got uh, companies like Atos and Computer Center, Adesso uh, startups. Uh, we have heard about some startups from uh, Felix Neugart before. I would like to mention uh, also DeepL, which is a very famous uh, artificial intelligence uh, company um, in translating sector. And yes, um, there's uh, a very great um, spectrum of uh, very interesting uh, ICT companies here. In addition, we have got a number of interesting international ICT companies which are uh, located here in NRW. Um, from the uh, telecommunications sector, we have got uh, Huawei, Xiaomi from China. Uh, we have got Infosys from India. And um, as already mentioned before, we have got Nota from Estonia here, uh, whose success story will hear later today in that seminar. I think. Um, yeah, business leaders, researchers, and investors in NRW can access all the know-how they need in order to shape the digital future. Um, on account of its innovative capabilities, the North Westphalian ICT sector is unlocking new sources of value added, creating new jobs, and um, it is an economic powerhouse in its own right. Um, a second glance on... Uh, one moment. Uh, a uh, second glance on key figures from ICT sector in NRW, um, we have to uh, look at the share of NRW ICT in the overall German ICT sector. Um, uh, we can see that uh, it is, uh, yeah, the sector from Northern Australia plays an outstanding role for the German ICT sector. Just under 29% of total sales um, in Germany are generated here, um, which uh, is a growth rate of over 2.5% uh, from 2017 to 2018. Just under one in five employees is employee, employed here and one in five ICT companies is uh, based in our state. Um, the numerous innovative IT enterprises and research organizations create very good conditions for the digital transformation of the economy and um, also, yeah, I think, very good conditions for uh, for companies from Estonia interest or from the um, Baltic states uh, who are interested in uh, yeah, coming to NRW. Um, Mm, I will uh, give in my in the further more presentation a uh, uh, look on the mobile communication sector as well as the uh, cybersecurity sector as two main uh, points uh, here in uh, in our um, unit in in the Ministry for Economic Affairs and digitalization. Um, the past few months have shown us how important it is to have a pow powerful digital communications infrastructure. Um, as we have already mentioned, uh, words like home office and uh, mobile working. Um, and uh, yeah, the powerful digital communications infrastructure also includes a strong mobile network. Um, here in Northern Australia, we have a good um, expansion status. Um, as you can see on the slide, we've got 99% of households and almost 99% of the area covered by LTE and um, 4G and um, the 5G rollout is uh, going on. We have got 4,000 5G extensions installed, which um, yeah, around uh, two thirds of households um, supply. Um, 
as NRW is the home to two of the main uh, mobile network operators here in Germany, um, Telekom and Vodafone, uh, we are in a close dialogue um, to that companies um, to optimize um, this uh, LTE and 4G situation, especially um, with regard to the nationwide 5G rollout. Um, 5G um, is uh, one of the most important technological developments of the last few years. Um, so I will take the chance to give you a, a bit more information about um, the strategy we follow here in NRW in that sector, because yeah, the technology is said to have a great economic potential, and um, we want to have a, um, to take a leading role in that field. And so um, our federal government has developed a strategy for um, the acceleration and implementation. Um, of 5G, uh, 5G, 5G strategy in at the end of 2019 which was very early in international comparison. And um, so uh, I think we have got uh, some very um, interesting uh, um, things reached in the past few years in that field. And uh, yeah, we are um, a front runner in this. Um, the 5G strategy is based on three pillars. We have got a competence center um, for networking the stakeholders and providing information um, to all uh, actors in that field here uh, in NRW and, uh, um, and around. Um, we have got targeted funding of 5G research and test fields with the aim of enabling effectful use and business uh, models with 5G technology. And um, we have got the so-called 5G dialogue because for successful and uh, swift implementation of the technology, a continuous exchange of information and dialogue between all players is necessary. Um, as you surely know, there are protests against the construction of 5G mass um, and there are uh, reservations about the technology in certain population groups, which should be countered at an early stage. Um, Yes, I will uh, have a look at the three strands uh, a bit closer. Um, the 5G uh, Competence Center fulfills uh, a very important role here in NRW for the ecosystem. Um, as you can see on that map, um, there are a lot of uh, important stakeholders of the 5G network um, located here um, from, um, yeah, there are nearly 3,000 actors which are interested in, in 5G um, in, that, uh, in that network. Um, we have got, yeah, as I already mentioned, um, Vodafone and Telecom. We have companies like Ericsson, Huawei and ZTE um, and uh, also research institutes and universities like the technical universities in Aachen or uh, Dortmund, um, which are doing a great work in that field um, of 5G research. Um, the Competence Center connects all relevant stakeholders. Um, they offer a wide range of information and know-how. Uh, they do, uh, yeah, at that times, online webinars and uh, a very um, good job on connecting and uh, informing um, all the people uh, interested in that, in that area. And uh, last but not least, it is a contact point for the funding projects um, located in NRW. Um, the um, promotion and support of 5G project aims to foster innovations um, and uh, to have a faster rollout and higher use of the technology all over Northern Australia and uh, with uh, Radiance Beyond. The state government is spending up to 90 million euros for the projects in the next uh, few years. Um, uh, both rounds of that uh, of that uh, competition are closed now. The first uh, round, we um, selected 13 projects, not we, but a jury uh, selected uh, 13 projects um, that have already started or will start in the next few months. Um, you can see them on this uh, on this map uh, in the presentation right now. And um, the projects for the second round have already been submitted and will be um, ev evaluated and selected in the next few uh, weeks and months. And I think we will see uh, a lot of very innovative and interesting 5G projects um, here in NRW in the near future. Um, yeah, the second uh, part of the um, project from the competition will start, I think, at the end of 2021 or uh, the beginning of 2022. Um, yeah, and last but not least, um, the third strand of the 5G strategy is, strategy is the 5G dialogue, um, uh, which covers social, technical, economic, ecological and political developments in exchange with different interest groups. Um, the 5G dialogue should lead, lead to a greater acceptance and understanding of the relevance of the technology and the rollout. 
And um, yeah, the three main topics which are discussed in different uh, formats um, are security of 5G networks, 5G and pollution control, which is also a very important theme. And um, yes, as I already mentioned, the social acceptance of the mobile network expansion. Yeah, and now um, I come to the last uh, theme in my presentation, um, which is uh, cybersecurity, uh, which is also a very important uh, topic in uh, in NRW, and which uh, yeah I think uh, we have already heard before that uh, it is a very important topic in the Balticum too. And um, later on we will have another uh, presentation from Christian Schmickler from the cybersecurity cluster in Bonn. Uh, but I will give a look on uh, what uh, the federal government um, is uh, doing in that. Field. Field, um, and why? Um, because as you can see, uh, or as you probably know, German companies are affected from cyber attacks every three minutes and six out of 10 of these attacks are directed as SMEs. And um, yeah, as uh, you probably know, um, we have got a huge number of small and medium sized companies here in Northern Australia and they are 64%, they give uh, jobs to 64% of the employees here. And in total it's 711,000. And yeah, this group is affected by cyber attacks, underestimates the risk and needs support to take the right protective measures. And um, that's uh, the one side of the medal. And the other side is that we have here in NRW a very good economic infrastructure in that field. Um, we have got also a unique research landscape in cybersecurity. And so it is a very attractive location for, for this uh, theme with about 700 researchers working in the field of cybersecurity uh, at uh, 20 university, universities of applied science and at Fraunhofer Institutes. And um, furthermore, we have got about 400 companies from the security sector, which are located here in NRW. Um, so um, uh, the uh, our federal state aims to maintain its leadership in that sector and wants to strengthen the cyber security, especially in industry. So in um, summer 2020, the federal government established a central service unit cybersecurity coordination office uh, to increase the level of cybersecurity protection in Northern Australia. Um, the unit is located in the new digital department of the Ministry of the Interior. Um, it is not in the Ministry for Economic Inf Affairs and Digitalization, but we are working very close together in that field. And yeah, it is a, a central service unit um, of the state government and will help to continuously increase the level of cybersecurity protection in Northern Australia. In this way, uh, citizens as well as companies and critical infrastructures um, such as power plants and hospitals are to be better protected against um, the risks of cyber, uh, cyber attacks and the relevant uh, data and information to cybersecurity um, for the uh, state administration of uh, Northern Australia will be centrally bundled and uh, forwarded in this coordination office. And um, a second main activity uh, that has a direct focus on uh, small and medium sized enterprises uh, is planned to launch uh, in the next few weeks. Um, it is a competence center for the cybersecurity in the NW economy. Um, which uh, aims to raise awareness of cybersecurity related issues, uh, particularly among small and medium sized enterprises. Um, it will offer and arrange um, the uh, support which is needed and it will develop and implement uh, support measures tailored um, to the target group. Yeah, so um, I come to the end of my short presentation today uh, and give a short wrap up. Um, what I would like you to take away from today's presentation is that the ICT landscape here in NRW is a very attractive one, uh, not only due to the numerous measures of which I've only presented a few today. Um, our country is a very good place for, for all stakeholders interested in the ICT sector, especially in the mobile communications uh, slash 5G sector or in the cybersecurity sector. And and um, yeah, we would like to get in touch with you and uh, welcome you to, to join our network here in NRW. Um, the uh, next uh, the uh, next slide uh, gives you some uh, links for further information about this ICT branch, about mobile communications, um, our 5G strategy, and last but not least, uh, some information about the um, or from the Competence Center 5G NRW. And um, yeah, I um, uh, would uh, like to uh, welcome you to um, ask me any questions. Um, I will, uh, if you need further assistance, uh, do not hesitate to contact us. And yeah, so I um, have to thank you for your uh, audience and um, wish you a good further event today. Thank you very much. 
Thank you very much, uh, Lena, for this very interesting presentation on these very important yeah, strategic uh, digitalization pillars um, of NRW. Um, by the way, we have now 57 participants, not least also because of the digital matchmaking um, that we are organizing this week um, between Baltic companies and mainly companies from NRW. And we um, will start actually this afternoon and I see also many of those participants of our digital matchmaking in the attendees list here. So I think it's very important for them also to hear um, what are the most important topics for NRW. So um, thank you very much for this. And actually, Lena, we have a question. Yes. And the question would be if and if so, how? can Baltic companies benefit from the 5G projects in NRW? Yeah, as I already mentioned, the um, two rounds of that uh, of that funding competition has already closed in, in January. So um, right now we have got not the possibility um, uh, that any um, companies take part in, uh, in, in project from that um, 5G competition. But um, if you are interested and you have got a special theme or a special question, we can try to connect you with uh, people working in projects, but uh, it will not be a funding uh, possibility possibility um, for uh, for that companies because the um, uh, the competition is closed right now and we will not have a third round in this uh, competition but um, I think I can mention that there will be uh, more competitions at the end of this year uh, in the ICT sector so uh, maybe there are other possibilities um, for uh, joint projects um, with international companies in the um, in the future. Okay, thank you very much, Lena. Actually, we have another question here from the uh, panelists. And um, the um, question is, where can I find more information regarding digital matchmaking? Um, I will mention this maybe at the end of the presentation, um, which is a, let's say, separate event. But um, I will mention also some words um, regarding this topic in the end. But for now, I would um, like to Thank you, Lena, for this presentation, and then hand over to our very good friend, um, Elena Matekina from NRV Global, and uh, Thomas Schneider, the CEO of Tailored Corporation Management, and they will tell us a little bit about ease of doing business in North Rhine-Westphalia. So, Elena, um, please go ahead. We see the presentation, but we don't hear you. Oh, okay. Uh, good morning from our side too. Uh, we are presenting our topic about the possibility of uh, doing business in Germany in NRW in a double pack today. Um, I speak with you from Düsseldorf, our headquarter. Uh, and uh, um, our partner from Baltic countries, Thomas Schneider, talks to you from Tallinn. Uh, Thomas supports us uh, in uh, our activity in Baltic countries, and uh, he is keep, uh, keeps uh, keeping the contact with Baltic companies in uh, institution for us too. Uh, the title easy of doing business uh, maybe is not quite right. Uh, um, NRW is uh, certainly a good and interesting market with uh, many opportunities, but of course a market uh, that needs a lot of preparation. Important uh, is the first the correct evaluation of the market, identification of competitors and possible partners, and finally, possibly uh, adaption of uh, their products. And for point one, uh, I start with point one, correct evaluation of the marks. Uh, that's the dates and figures, uh, fu uh, figures for uh, Nordrhein-Westphalia. Uh, 
his summary to our markets markets again the, we are leading germany state by dgp mid 20 uh, com, uh, 0.7 percent of the germany dgp it's once and uh, we are um, thomas please next slide Okay, uh, here's the important sectors that could be uh, the focus of uh, your future activity. Uh, and sorry, that's the, uh, I'm sorry, it's the DGP charts. Uh, I we are, we are very like these charts because um, uh, here's definitely in a, in a W number one. Uh, at, uh, second charts, please. Next chart, please. And here's uh, important sectors uh, that could be uh, the focus of your future uh, activity. Uh, it's mechanical engineering, chemicals, uh, metal products, uh, automotive. Uh, we have a lot of company uh, there um, works. Uh, they have activity in this branch. So, and uh, that's more um, we have in this um, sector, uh, these sectors allowed in seven, 700, um, 7,600 small and medium sized companies. And that's very good partner for your future activity. Uh, we have in Nota Westphalia 99% uh, SMEs company and um, uh, the Thomas can uh, talk uh, about the Possibility, uh, their cooperation, and their what is of their company. It's uh, your future. Thomas, the floor is yours. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Uh, Elena Matekina, thank you very much uh, for your introduction and your commitment uh, to um, uh, NRW. And in general, thank you for inviting me. Um, my name is Thomas Steider and I'm uh, supporting uh, NRW Global Business um, for a couple of time already um, when it comes to uh, potential partners uh, which are interested in the German market and uh, guiding them uh, to, the, uh, to one place in Germany, to North Rhine-Westphalia. And it is not so easy this morning to uh, um, complete or to fill a gap of um, information because a lot has been mentioned by all the speakers uh, beforehand. But I was asked uh, to focus on one part of um, the aspects why doing business in North Rhine-Westphalia. Um, just to uh, make a kind of a little side remark. It is um, uh, it is remarkable to see uh, in um, uh, the, the density. The density is not only about the population. The density is about uh, potential clients in all kinds of spheres. Uh, you have seen from the speakers beforehand. The density is about uh, pub. Uh, the public area, uh, there are, are a lot of uh, public structures which are also having a lot of work and a lot of projects. Um, there is a density of people, the individuals, um, who are also turning into somehow the, the 21st century, especially nowadays with social distancing, e-commerce solutions, uh, all kinds of solutions, how somehow to feed the people yeah, with either information, products, deliveries, and so on. Uh, they are um, it's a kind of a unique place, um, uh, which is in, in this sense, the center of Europe, uh, but also in the center of Germany with a lot of power. Um, I have the pleasure in the next minutes to give you a kind of a idea uh, about industry. As industry matters, Germany is uh, is a industri is an industrial nation, and uh, despite of this, of course, also the industry turns into uh, digitalization projects, and um, this uh, can't be underestimated. What is somehow given an opportunity in Northern Westphalia with the potential clients from very small 
to very big. And uh, this, I think, is also the opportunity for the kind of candidate ca uh, companies coming from the Baltic states as also size matters. Yeah? So um, the ones are somehow already experienced in our export markets and looking just for the next bigger opportunity. As the other one is coming with a startup idea and is looking just for the match. I think for both um, uh, cases, uh, interfaces are existing and also given. Um, let me um, give you a, another dimension of, uh, of thinking yeah? um, when it comes to North America's failure, not only positioned in the heart of Europe, uh, at the end, it reflects also a kind of a huge, huge place for logistics. So we call it a number one logistics locations. Uh, already 24,000 logistic companies with almost 364,000 employees are in place. We are talking about North Rhine-Westphalia. failure. Um, uh, you have the backup by uh, already the um, uh, uh, scientific institutions, which are giving also the kind of a basic ground for um, further activities in, in matters of modernization and digitalization as potential partners on site, on site. Yeah? We are just mentioning in Dortmund, the Fraunhofer Institute for Material Flow and Logistics, IML, one partner also of uh, NRV uh, Global Business. Um, when it comes to kind of numbers, uh, illustrating you, so who is who, yeah? Um, nine of the 25 biggest logistic companies based in RW. Um, companies, the big logistics, yeah? so Deutsche Post, uh, which is a, a very relevant player, uh, not only for the German logistics market, headquarter, uh, NRW. Um, another uh, quite dominant and uh, big players globally are also um, uh, having headquarters, German headquarters in NRW. I just mentioned FedEx, Fiege, Renus, Schenker, UPS, name it. And there's a growth in this sector. Uh, we can say um, every year, 1 million square meters of new logistics space are created in North Rhine with failure. So there's music on, there's something happen, and um, uh, it is worth to take a look on. Um, uh, IT hotspot in Germany. I mean, they, uh, uh, th things have been mentioned already. Yeah? Um, I, I wanted just to illustrate maybe um, the, the one uh, the one idea I've got in mind, seeing the reality of a very inno uh, partially very innovative and pragmatic IT companies or also teams, yeah, uh, which have proven that, that they can do something in their home markets, uh, namely Lithuania, Latvia, or Estonia. Um, there's always a question how to uh, find the right place and the right partner in Germany. Um, looking around, and you may do it not only in North Rhine Westphalia, uh, there are certain opportunities. And it is, of course, all about the right partner, the right project, um, the right client yeah, who is uh, giving you the trust. But um, comparing the the efforts um, uh, statistically a company, a, a businessman has to do uh, finding these right parameters. I think it, here it shows also the North Rhine failure um, shows a ex very interesting playground as you have this high density, the density. It is not so difficult to have five or six meetings a day with relevant and interesting potential partners. As you're, when you're in public business, jumping from one city to the other, even without, uh, within minutes or within half an hour, 
either by train, as is a perfect uh, public transport or, uh, organization existing, or uh, uh, via your individual car. Um, highly recommend to take a look at the landscape of clients, the landscape of R&D, which is uh, somehow also uh, combining ICT and uh, engineering sciences and uh, not to under, uh, underestimate various, various startup initiatives, which are supported not only um, from the public side, especially also with a very strong link into the real business world, especially in the industry. So, okay, um, world-class in research and development. Um, just to give you um, just also some key figures in this very short time uh, we have this morning, just to tease you. Uh, imagine 70 universities, yeah, um, 14 Fraunhofer institutes, which are incubators as such traditionally, 12 Max Planck institutes, uh, more than 50 non-university activities, yeah, students. 770,000 students in, in Northern Westphalia available. Yeah? A perfect ground also to find the right talents for your future activities in Germany. <clears throat> um, what else to say? 5G has been mentioned already by um, uh, the speaker before. Um, I would uh, go ahead and uh, give you somehow an imagination uh, who is who, um, but also the, to um, make you somehow interested uh, to fill the gap. I would call it, let's fill the gap. Um, just some, the general numbers where, where uh, North Rhine's failure uh, is playing. Yeah? Biggest trading partner, neighbor in the Netherlands, as you can see. Uh, China, very relevant, France, and so on, name it. Um, the uh, Lithuania, Latvia, and uh, Estonia comes a little bit later. But um, to see uh, who is having which piece of cake, then uh, Northern Westphalia uh, plays a certain role. I, I just give you uh, the, the, tort, the tort of Latvia. So you see uh, uh, Germany's exports coming to Latvia. Yeah? So in 2020, it was 1.5 billion euros. Share, North Rhine failure, 15%. Let's take a look backwards. Uh, Germany's imports from Latvia last year, 900 million euros. Share already market in North Rhine failure 24%. I would say, um, yeah, remarkable. Um, uh, we have a kind of a, uh, also the, the timeline, how it somehow has grown and uh, the trends uh, for the uh, Latvian uh, North Rhine Westphalia business relation. Um, but uh, let me just jump um, a little bit further to the uh, Estonian case. So Estonia, Germany's uh, exports last year, one point, almost 1.8 billion euros. Um, imports from Germany, 800 million euros. In both cases, you see also significant shares uh, uh, coming either from Northern Westphalia or going already to Northern Westphalia. Um, one, one of the exporter you will listen right after me as I see him in the agenda. Um, uh, uh, seeing the Lithuanian case um, with 3.4 billion euros last year export to North Westphalia, uh, the biggest candidate country here in uh, today's, um, but also as you see the imports um, uh, from uh, Lithuania to Germany with 2.2 uh, billion euros, also a, back, uh, a gap. And here I wanted to say, uh, traditionally, uh, there is a, a need and uh, a, a, good, a, a good export market for North Rhine-Westphalia and German companies, not only in the Baltic states. 
and um, I think uh, uh, it is also also good for German businesses to see that uh, the products are needed and wanted in the near neighborhood. But um, uh, coming from one, one of the Baltic countries and being very active uh, all over the place, I would say it is a, a, a good motivation to see there is a gap, a gap uh, in the trade balance and um, there's a good chance maybe to fill also the, the gap to uh, come to a kind of a balanced uh, interest of trade. And um, this, uh, it shows me also that Northern Westphalia is already recognized as a very interesting place. And um, uh, uh, I think so for the near future, there is more to do. Uh, also the trends about Lithuania, um, you see also uh, the different kind of industry and branches uh, which are relevant. And um, here uh, uh, a few bullet points, um, what, uh, what means um, doing business in Germany, what does it request and uh, 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 how it uh, looks like. I think uh, it is um, not rocket science, but uh, speaking here on behalf also of a um, team which uh, I'm working with towards Northern Westphalia. Uh, Felix Neugart and Elena Matekina, they do an excellent job as this kind of one-stop agency as, uh, as giving interested companies as such investors or startups kind of a perfect package of services, not only in matters of letting them know how to do business, in matters of uh, how to register, or maybe even to find uh, uh, a certain kind of welcome package uh, uh, regionally. I think the really, the, the, the asset they are offering is that for newcomers, you are welcome in a kind of a network of actors, let it be from public side, but let it be also from the scientific side, all the kind of mentioned big numbers of academic institutions, which are uh, 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 giving a lot of energy and know-how to the businesses and backing up also international uh, newcomers, plus the strong link to the valuable network of businesses in Northern Westphalia, all kinds of branches in the industry. Um, um, I may say great opportunity, today only digital, but um, let me say um, it's worth to visit, not only uh, on a webinar, uh, thanks to the host here, um, uh, Northern Westphalia is worth to visit, not only business-wise, it is also worth to see um, it has a kind of an unbelievable numbers of uh, sites to see. Uh, I just name it uh, the uh, uh, Cologne Cathedral, yeah, one of the UNESCO, one of the five UNESCO World Cultural Heritage sites in Northern Westphalia. Um, unbelievable um, uh, things to do. So worth to come, worth to take a look worth to take a stop at uh, NRV Global Business. So thank you very much for your attention. Um, here also our um, uh, uh, contact details with the email and uh, please feel free uh, to get in touch with us. Uh, we are always um, helping you with pleasure and uh, helping you coming over uh, or we come to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Thomas. And uh, of course, thank you very much, Elena, as well, for these very interesting insights and facts about North Rhine Westphalia. So I don't see any questions in the chat. So this is a short reminder to everybody. Please use the chat function in case you have some questions. But since there are none, I would suggest to move from the general possibilities of NRW that have been just presented to us to a very concrete success story 
um, of an Estonian company, Northar. And for this, we have uh, Tavi with us, who will tell us now a little bit about his personal um, and his company's success story. And I think this will be very interesting. So Tavi, welcome and please share your story with us. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for the invitation. It's, a, it's a truly an honor to be here. And it has been uh, um, uh, very interesting for me to listen to the speaker so far. Um, I will also just uh, check whether I'm able to start sharing my screen. Uh, so maybe a question to the organizers. Uh, what would I have to... Okay, Do, uh, does that work? Yes, it works. We see okay. The Perfect. Ah, and sorry, I had forgotten to uh, uh, remove the privacy uh, protection. So, uh, um, happy to see a lot of uh, uh, people who are familiar here. Uh, thank you for the invitation once more. Um, and and uh, I will share the story of, of Nortel in uh, North Rhine Festival and, and, and Germany in general. Uh, the slides I'm happy to share with the organizers later on, so if anybody uh, finds them interesting, they should be uh, available. Uh, let us uh, kick off, uh, first of all, uh, talking about um, uh, Nortel. Let me see. Uh -huh, okay. So, Nortel in brief, for those of you who don't uh, know our story. Uh, so we are uh, uh, about a 100 million euro company uh, across different markets. Uh, a thousand experts uh, and of those uh, about 200 are uh, located uh, in Germany uh, in, in different uh, offices including North Rhine-Westfalen and uh, we uh, we are a growth company um, uh, this year uh, should be significantly higher already um, you see also on the bottom of the screen there are I think some quite well-known uh, German logos uh, and, and of course, uh, a very cool one, which I will uh, talk a little bit more about this is Blickit, which is uh, from Wuppertal, uh, the, the very cool uh, uh, city, uh, a little bit uh, east of Dusseldorf, uh, which has a, a train in the sky. So I, th I hope uh, you'll be able to visit. But, uh, but in principle, um, uh, our story uh, is an Estonian story. So we uh, kicked off in Estonia, we have entered different markets. And, and a few years ago in 2017, we uh, also started working uh, in Germany. Um, uh, we, we do different projects uh, uh, in different uh, areas. Uh, and, and we have six offices uh, in, in Germany already. Uh, and and uh, especially related to the topic today, you know, NRV and, and you know, how did Nortel come to Germany and, and how did we choose uh, NRV and, and Düsseldorf? So uh, we, we actually started looking at and uh, looking at the German market and examining the German market already five or six, now it's already seven years ago, uh, visiting trade shows um, and, and meeting with the companies, meeting with public officials. Uh, and we were very lucky in a way that uh, a lot of German uh, stakeholders were also visiting Tallinn and visiting Estonia to learn about the Estonian digitalization story. So we took full advantage of this opportunity as well. And, and we counted, I think, 2019, you know, before the pandemic, um, uh, we hosted uh, almost 50 delegations in Tallinn. So on average, you know, one per week. So that's a lot of contacts. And this gave us the uh, confidence. Um, and I think uh, Elena Matakina very well uh, pointed out in her uh, presentation earlier that it's very important to understand the market and understand what's your opportunity. Uh, and I think this, um, like several years of, of pre-work, several years of getting to know uh, people, getting to know companies, getting to know also comp competitors, you know, gave us the confidence of, of coming to Germany. Uh, we saw that you know there is a potential for for um, a company like us to support uh, the German industrial machine, the German um, uh, bureaucratic machine to be more efficient, to be more digital. Um, when when we had made a principal decision that Nortel wants to enter the German market, uh, that you know we have something relevant to offer, um, it was a question for us. You know where do we start? And, and uh, you know, looking from Tallinn, the 
very fa fast, you know, obvious choice was Berlin. But uh, after doing a little bit more research, we uh, narrowed down, or we actually uh, not narrowed down, but we uh, we had a wider option. So we wanted to look at uh, uh, North and Westphalen for the obvious reasons that all the you know presenters before have already outlined. We looked at Hamburg, we looked at uh, Frankfurt, we looked at uh, Berlin, and and. Uh, um, uh, I think uh, Florian Schroeder uh, mentioned it in his introductory speech that uh, you know coming from Dortmund to Düsseldorf, it's it's like one continuous city, and and uh, uh, it's actually a discussion we had in our board um, uh, back in 2017 and, and early 2018 before we actually established Nortel in, in Düsseldorf. Uh, uh, because uh, uh, we had traveled extensively to all all, all places in Germany, uh, including to the to the south to Munich, and 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 uh, if you really if you have done this, if you've driven around Germany a lot, if you you know been on trains, if uh, if you've done a lot of meetings in in uh, across Germany, then you really see that you know going uh, from Berlin to Hamburg, either with train or a car, uh, you see a lot of uh, fields which typically means there's not so much economic activity um, uh, and, and really you know going uh, from Dusseldorf to uh, any other direction or, or, or to uh, Köln or, or Bonn uh, you know every 15 minutes of driving you, you pass uh, you know uh, the GDP of a small country so there's so much economic activity and and of course you know there's a uh, related to this economic activity there's an abundance of, of talent so there's a lot of uh, uh, very well uh, trained um, employees, uh, potential potential employees available as well. So this is how we ended up um, uh, in 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 NRV, and and I think it was a great choice for us. I would also like to extend uh, our thanks to the both Ahaka and the uh, Invest NRV uh, NRV Invest uh, team uh, for their support uh, during this process. So so uh, I, I think as every business person knows, in the end. Uh, you have to uh, be successful yourself, but it helps if somebody uh, supports you from time to time to make some things a little bit easier. So, so this is our story. Um, um, moving a little bit forward, um, and I, I will jump a little bit into Estonian story and, and our experience in Germany as well, but I wanted to highlight one thing uh, in the very beginning. I, I think that uh, it's extremely important uh, if you want to enter the German market to really uh, not only tell your story from, you know, be it uh, from Estonia or Latvia or Lithuania, but contribute to the uh, discussion uh, in a meaningful way. And, and uh, Nortel has made, a, you know, several projects like this. I'm highlighting one of them here. We've invested significant resources from our uh, consulting team into understanding the electronic identity um, ecosystem in Germany and in different countries around uh, Europe. Uh, and, and we are contributing our know-how into the discussion on the German market, which I think has been uh, very well received. And, and of course, uh, we're not doing this just because we're nice people, but this type of an investment helps us uh, position Nortel as a uh, um, uh, opinion leader and somebody who uh, can be turned to when uh, decision makers are, are looking at uh, serious challenges. So if you have the opportunity to contribute into the discussion somehow in a meaningful way, I, I highly recommend it. Uh, it has been uh, very uh, efficient uh, for us. Okay, um, I, I just you know, very briefly, uh, I guess many of you know the Estonian uh, digital story, but uh, I will jump over a couple of slides. Uh, and uh, if you're interested, they, they are included in the in the package afterwards. So uh, you know, our story is is based on uh, you know having a very efficient electronic identity, uh, which which really helps building digital societies, and that's a very hot topic right now in Germany. So we're so supporting uh, multiple stakeholders on the German market here, and I think that's a very very uh, good platform uh, to come from. And uh, and of course, you know, we're well aware that the uh, colleagues from Latvia and Lithuania have, have similar uh, setups. Um, interoperability, it's becoming increasingly important also on the German market. So, you know, having this background from Estonia, again, I think is very useful. Uh, what I uh, would like to stress every time, you know, when we have this discussion in Germany is that we are not trying to, you know, use or build the Estonian uh, uh, 
solutions in Germany, we are always doing it the German way, but inspired by Estonia, because there are obviously very important differences between Estonia and Germany. So, so the key is to find, you know, what, what is the common denominator? Like what from the, you know, what, what from your past experience can be used in this new, ex, uh, new situation? And I think we've been successful in this. Uh, and, and you see that, uh, in, for example, the X-Road, which is very well known in Estonia, we have one X-Road in the German uh, context. Uh, uh, it's possible to have federation of X-Road and, and uh, you know, that's something that we're also uh, talking to uh, about uh, with stakeholders. Um, I think that it's very important to have a, a user centric uh, uh, solutions and also to think about data security. Uh, I think we all know that Germany is a very data security, data privacy centric market. And this is a, a very important, I, I cannot stress this enough. Uh, so you have to think about uh, how do you solve this. And, and I think um, uh, coming from the Estonian background, we have some uh, innovative, innovative solutions here as well. What is hi highlighted here is the data tracker. So this gives uh, people, citizens, the ability to know what's going on with the data. Uh, and I think uh, what we have seen is that this idea is very well received in Germany. And then uh, the end of, of this uh, brief story about Estonia, and, and this is really what Nortel is about as, as a consulting company. Um, uh, wh what we see is that you know, the, the journey of, of digital solutions is, is uh, in Germany, it's only at the beginning. Uh, of course, you know, uh, we, we want to uh, get rid of paper. We want to move, uh, especially during the pandemic time, we want to uh, be able to deal with our bureaucratic or, or business uh, activities online. But uh, uh, I think we should also think about the next step. Like, how do we get into seamless transactions? How do we... Uh, get into uh, proactive services uh, because our philosophy is that you know the best service uh, for the person or the business is the service that you don't know you're consuming uh, because it, it happens magically. Of course, this is connected to data privacy issues and there's a lot of complex um, uh, solutions to be looked at. But uh, I think that this is the way how to think about the future. Um, Moving forward about uh, uh, our activities and you know how we are bringing this Estonian experience to uh, Northern Festvale in a concrete way. Uh, so this is a, a major project we have been working on for the past couple of years. It's, it's uh, called Bligit. It's based in Wuppertal. And, and here you see the, the famous uh, sky trains uh, that are running um, on the uh, river Wupper. Um, so I think that it's a very well, um, or it's, it's an ongoing, uh, very, very hot topic across uh, Europe uh, that uh, uh, the local economies are suffering uh, from uh, you know, sometimes unfair competition from global platforms. Uh, so the small shops, the, the local service providers, the local uh, media outlets are suffering uh, because the revenue is moving to Amazon, Google or Facebook or, or some of the other platforms you see here. And the question is, you know, what do we do about this? And, and in, uh, inspired by the Estonian experience, uh, we, have, uh, uh, we are working um, with uh, Wuppertal stakeholders uh, on a platform which uh, is now live since uh, uh, last year. Uh, and, and this is a, a local platform for the city and region of Wuppertal, which is offering local services. It's, it's focused on local services uh, for the local, uh, local people. And, and uh, it has a wide range of, uh, of different uh, domains that it's covering from education, uh, healthcare, uh, finance, uh, local mobility, uh, culture, uh, and it's also supporting local merchants uh, uh, with special uh, services for them to reach uh, the local consumer. And the idea here is to uh, have something which is locally controlled uh, so that the Wuppertal stakeholders are able to uh, design this as a, as a platform and they're able to move this forward uh, and, and I think that we see and, and the Wuppertal stakeholders see this as a step against the domination of, of global platforms. So if you're interested in this uh, uh, we'll be happy to uh, connect you with, uh, with Blikit uh, located uh, in, in Wuppertal. A couple of other uh, views here as well and we've seen a really excellent uh, uh, feedback from the from the users for this type of a service and and i would consider this a, a really good example of of combining the, the the local challenge the local 
uh, realities of the infrastructure and, and digital way of life in, in, in Germany uh, with the experience from Estonia. And, and I'm, I'm sure that uh, we'll be working on, on many similar uh, projects in Germany in the future. And, and what we have seen is that uh, the German uh, customers have been, I think, extremely open to uh, new ideas as long as they are well thought through for the German context. Like nobody is interested in implementing, uh, you know, purely Estonian ideas. It's always about putting this Estonian idea into a German context. So a couple of more views of the of the platform here, and and. Uh, yeah, if you're interested, you're. Uh, I think uh, in, in most countries you are able to actually download it also from the uh, App Store, uh, both on Android and iPhone. Um, for for future contacts, uh, uh, of course, I'm available and, and my contacts are available at AHK or or NRV Invest. But uh, uh, since uh, last year, we acquired a, a German uh, uh, IT consulting company. Uh, uh, we have also a, a German uh, CEO, Mr. Ole Berens Carlson, so he's also happy to happy to engage uh, with stakeholders. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Tavi. I should not only thank you, I also should congratulate you on this really impressive uh, success story. So congratulations on this. And um, I don't see any questions. I mean, uh, there's a question, but this was probably more to, to Elena. So we will come back to this question. Arnoldas, I see your question. But for you, Tavi, maybe I have a question. Sure. Um, you mentioned earlier um, that also coming from an Estonian background, now working in Germany, and you mentioned that there are certain differences between Estonia, or let's take the Baltic states as the region, and Germany. So what do you think or what would be your suggestion? What can Germany actually learn from um, Baltic states or, the, or companies from the Baltic states? Is there maybe a difference in the mindset that could help also German companies? Sure. So I, th I think that uh, uh, one of the uh, uh, you know, key takeaways that we have seen and, and also we are helping with some of our customers is this uh, uh, you know, digital first mindset and and the mindset of uh, of uh, uh, thinking for a little bit longer term, which I think in general, you know, the German companies and government is very good at uh, because of such scale. So the investments uh, in Germany are typically very long term, as we see in infrastructure, etc. But I, I would bring an example here if if I'll spend uh, one minute uh, to illustrate it. We had a discussion with a, a local IT company we are partnering with. It's, it's a great company with you know, really good experts. And we were discussing different uh, reference projects. And they presented very proudly a very cool project. So, so they uh, automated and digitalized the incoming mail department for a large company. So, so they have, uh, I think, roughly about 900,000, 1 million uh, letters coming in per month. And it was a huge burden, uh, very costly. So, so they. Uh, implemented a very, very innovative um, uh, solution to you know, open the envelopes, scan the letters, understand what it says, and then direct it to the right uh, department in the company. So it's a huge saving, uh, really cool technology, you know, uh, image recognition, uh, text understanding, so, so very, uh, very high tech. And, and when he was talking about this project, I, I, I was really trying to understand, like, how do I do this politely now? Because such a project is really against our religion. Uh, uh, because what, what they did with this project is actually uh, cement a business process for that large company where for some reason they are getting a million letters per month. Because, because my thinking from the beginning is there's something wrong with their business process that people have to write them in, in, uh, in envelopes. You know, when was the last time I saw an envelope in Estonia? I don't remember. Uh, so, so, so there's something fundamentally wrong. And, and, uh, and I think that, uh, you know, not having lived this type of uh, non-paper, fully digital uh, life that we live in Estonia, you st sometimes start solving the problem from the wrong place. The technology they use is really, it's fantastic. Uh, the, you know, the engineering work is fantastic. But, but because the experience of, of living is different, they start from the, let's say, wrong place, I would say. Because for the same amount of money that they invested in this very, very you know, high-tech uh, mail sorting system, uh, you 
probably could have eliminated, and I'm just making a guess here, you could have eliminated like two, 300,000 of those letters. And, and that would make your company on a, on a path towards a, a you know, fully digital future instead of uh, uh, cementing the status quo. So, so uh, I, I have uh, you know, full confidence in the ingenuity of German engineers. I, I don't think Estonian engineers are better than German engineers or you know, like Latvian Lithuanian engineers. Uh, but, but I think that our uh, experience of how do we look at problems is different. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Tavi. I think this was a very good example to illustrate uh, probably also the different mindset. Instead of digitalizing or digitizing the process, they tried to, to improve it, to make it more efficient, but they didn't ask what is the purpose of this, of this process and, and, and therefore they still have these um, millions of letters. Thank you very much, Tavi. Very, very interesting, um, impressive. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, and now last but not least, we have uh, Christian Schmickler from the uh, cybersecurity sector in NRW. Um, the focus here is on Bonn, which is also called the safest city in Germany. Christian, we are very eager to hear more about that, please. Hello, um, Mr. Otto. Thank you very much for having me today. I hope you can hear me. If you could just give me one sign. Everything is perfect. Perfect. Yes. Thank you very much for the invitation here. I hope we are one of the safest cities. At least we do have a lot of cybersecurity expertise and we try to put that into practice every single day. So, um, yeah, welcome to this presentation on the cybersecurity cluster of Bonn, which we call also the heart of cybersecurity in Europe and um, due to the well, due to the, the, a conglomerate of cybersecurity knowledge that we have here in the region. We have mentioned those numbers quite a few times already, um, so I do not have to repeat all of those, that we do have a strong ICT industry, that we do have a strong um, share of the German GDP. Um, but I think the most important thing is that the economy in, in, in Northern Westphalia and in Germany in general is very fragmented, um, which results in the fact that we have very many SME, small and medium-sized enterprises, more than 700,000 of them, and most of them very small ones. 79% of those have less than five employees. Um, in terms of cybersecurity, this is kind of an important numbers because we know that the smaller a business is, the less protected they usually are. And when we did some research, primary research, and looked at some secondary sources, it is very um, sad actually to see the high level of effectiveness um, due to a study from Bitcom in, in, in 2019, 88% of all companies were certainly or probably affected by a cyber incident within um, the last two years. And um, this number is not going down right now. And uh, we st still see a lack of awareness, kind of the underestimation of their own risk. Like companies say, okay, we do know that there is a problem, that there is high risk, but others are probably uh, more at risk than we are. Um, it is probably very similar to what one would think about one's own driving skills we also see this kind of skew in the in the in the personal perception we also see this lack of prevention uh, use of old and unpatched systems not only in hospitals but also um, in, in many smes and, and companies of course in general and um, also the thing of well the, the the challenge of detection if some intruder has actually entered one's own network to detect that there is somebody something going on and um, also the the capacities for those um, for those detective detective methods are quite low and there's hardly any cyber insurance available. And also there's scale resources. If you talk to SMEs and say, yeah, okay, okay, we do know that there is an issue, but probably we're not at the highest risk, as I said. So uh, we do not, we are not willing or able to invest great resources in terms of uh, time and money into uh, projects related to cybersecurity. So uh, we see that SMEs are often defenseless against organized cybercrime. And uh, there's also an information overload and an urgent need for action. So this is kind of the knowledge basis that we had when we founded the cybersecurity cluster in Bonn, because we said, okay, there's attacks exponentially increasing and they cannot be handled alone. And we must share knowledge and foster cooperation of all those involved in cybersecurity. And we also realized that Bonn offers the perfect symbiosis of cybersecurity authorities, they said, because we have research institutions 
and we have private industry and we also have um, public institutions that all um, work can work together in the realm of cybersecurity. And we said, okay, there's an army of the bad already, apparently, and we have to create kind of a line in one, an army of the good. And we have to do that in North Westphalia, in Germany, and probably internationally as well, because digitization, as we know, is not an issue that can be uh, resolved locally. Nevertheless, corporations are also um, stimulated by um, a kind of closeness, a local closeness, and we live in this um, Europe, well, in this Northern Westphalian ecosystem, and I've just uh, took, uh, taken some logos of the most famous um, institutions, probably starting, for example, with the Federal Commissioner for Data Protection and Freedom of Information, um, who is located in Bonn, then the German Armed Forces with their cyber defense um, center in Germany, probably most importantly, the Federal Office for Information Security, the BSI, then the BWI, which is the IT system house, if you will, for the German Armed Forces. We have different Fraunhofer institutions, um, the biggest uh, European um, security operations center at uh, located at Deutsche Telekom IT Systems. We have Deutsche Post DHL Group, of course, for whom um, cybersecurity is a big issue, and then different research um, organizations as well, such as the University of Bonn. And I would also like, and the, all those um, institutions are bundled in the cybersecurity cluster, which you will learn more of in a minute. I would also like to uh, mention one of our closest partners, which is Eurobits, um, which, is, which is also an association located in the rural area in Bochum. Um, which bundles um, kind of famous institutions of cybersecurity such as G-Data, Rode and Schwarz Cybersecurity, Secunet, and also the Ruhr University of Bochum and the Horst Goetz Institute, um, which are quite famous also for education and research in the realm of cybersecurity. So also in the realm of, um, yeah, well, let's say it, education and research, it is uh, quite an interesting place. And this is just a very, um, very, very brief um, kind of summary of the actual players involved in those clusters. Um, if you look at those maps, you can get, a, a, get an idea of what institutions are actually involved in only those two associations, Eurobits and the cybersecurity cluster in Bonn, um, all located in Northern Westphalia. So at the end of the day, um, we formulated a vision for our cluster in Bonn, which I represent today. Um, so, and we said that the cluster primary goal is to make Bonn the heart of cybersecurity in Europe. This is kind of the local initiative, but at the same time, on a society level, we also have to contribute to the immunization of society against cyber attacks. The word immunization has been declared before COVID-19 came into place. We hope that we can immunize um, society against uh, both um, biological and cyber viruses. I would like to mention that is this, at this point. To give you an idea what the structure of the cybersecurity cluster looks like, we do have a management board, um, which, also, um, which, which also has the city of Bonn in, in the management board. So also the public sector is quite strongly involved. And we also have the Chamber of Commerce and Industry, which gives us direct access to the small and medium sized enterprise market, um, particularly. We have the Fraunhofer Gesellschaft, Fraunhofer Society, and different uh, small and medium sized um, enterprises as well. Uh, Deutsche Telekom, I mentioned them earlier already. In the advisory board, we have many public authorities, such as the Federal Office for Information Security, or also the police, which also does a lot of um, awareness raising in the realm of cybersecurity. And then we have a members meeting of more than 105, I think 107 members right now. So this kind of gives you an overview how, um, how we are organized. Well, if we dive now into what topics or strategic elements we are tackling uh, with a cybersecurity cluster in the realm of cybersecurity. Um, it is particular raising awareness by events, position the, the topic uh, deeply in society. We also have founded a wise council of cybersecurity. We do work with startups. We have a secure, secure digital city of Bonn um, project going on, which I will tell you a bit uh, in a minute. And also this, this whole, um, the, the whole process of doing research and transferring cybersecurity knowledge into practice is one of our 
most important aims. I will go through the most important of um, those pieces now step by step. Um, the, the first is the, the raising awareness for the topic because we still see that this is apparently a necessity. Uh, we do have one major international event. It's called the Cybersecurity Tech Summit in Europe in 2019. We did it for the first time with about 2,000 people still physically present. We can hardly imagine people so ha having so many people physically present. Last year, we had to do it as a hybrid um, event with 1,600 people um, yeah, being, being with the event remotely. But we also have many regional events where we try to inform society and um, small and medium sizes enterprises in particularly and in particular about the current challenges and um for example an innovative format is the cybersecurity slam which is kind of a science slam uh, focusing on cybersecurity and here are some impressions of the cybersecurity tech summit that i just mentioned from 2019 where you see kind of the who's who of the german cyber security around like Arne Schönbaum, the president of the Federal Office for Information Security, or uh, Tim Hötkes, the CEO of Deutsche Telekom, also have um, Andreas Finkbart, the minister of the Ministry of Economics and Digitization in um, Northern Westphalia, yeah, who has been mentioned before, or also Achim Berg, the president of Bitcom. Then, as I said, this is what the whole um, event looked like um, last year when we had to do it virtually, digitally, we um, did our best to have its, well, the impression of a physical event, actually. And we would be glad um, to have a physical event this year again, but we guess that we will have to do it in a virtual way again. More on that um, a bit later. Perhaps you would like to participate in this event too, then uh, we will be happy to um, inform you and give you some information. Uh, well, the second strategic element is the formation of a wise council of cybersecurity expert um, that we founded uh, the day the, the, in 2019 actually it is supposed to advise politics and businesses on question of cybersecurity and give recommendations what politics and industry should implement and do and it is staffed with leading um, currently only national independent cybersecurity experts like six professors um, from um, different cybersecurity hotspots in germany not only in northern westphalia but also from Munich, for example, um, Claudia Eckert, um, the, the president of the Fraunhofer um, um, Institute there. Um, and they brought the first report. It's called Mehr Sicherheit für die digitale Transformation, or in English, More Security for the Digital Transformation. It is only available in German, unfortunately. Uh, this year, we will try to have an English version as well. But since we focused on the German politics um, last year, it is only available in one language. And there's like a kind of suggestions or um well yeah kind of suggestions we could say for politics what should be um, implemented into legislation we also have this uh, project and we know that we lack behind in this in the secure or in the digital city or smart city market we do know that the baltics are the kind of the forerunners in this field but we try our best um, to do what we can do here and I think due to the strong cybersecurity market that we have here, it might make sense to, to look at an international cooperation um, where kind of cybersecurity meets smart and secure digital um, city uh, projects and perhaps developing like a holistic approach, how data can be perfectly put in place and be protected at the same time. Um, we also look at the medical market, secure or designing a secure digital hospital, medical campus in cooperation here with a university clinic um, in um, Bonn. Just what a um, holistic approach again, what uh, such a clinic may look like in the very close future. The most important um, thing that I mentioned earlier already is the transfer of cybersecurity know-how into practice, because uh, we see that there's lots of knowledge, actually, technically, um, most challenges are already addressed and resolved, but the transfer into um, public authorities, into industries, into all kinds of institutions, really, that is what is lacking. So on the one hand, we do work together with universities um, to strengthen education in that field. We also promote the training of experts in the field of cybersecurity, working together with um, different academies of cybersecurity, and but also directly supporting SMEs in building up cyber resilience. We have uh, several projects right now going on, and particularly addressing the third point, the support of SMEs. 
uh, we are about to design blueprints, what kind of solutions and measures SME should have implemented in order to be best protected. We are also about to build an online platform, kind of an educational platform with practical information, how to secure one's own company. Um, and we're also designing innovative formats. I already mentioned the cybersecurity slam or also uh, excuse um, me for the word, but a fuck up night in terms of what may go wrong if you do not care enough for certain issues in the realm of cybersecurity. Um, I also said that we closely cooperate with Eurobits, so I do not want to miss out on mentioning some of their projects as well, because it's also very relevant in the Northern Westphalia here, and the Eurobits Security Summit, which is like a whole week in the Ruhr area with different um, events and projects and awards um, that are given away, um, in centering around Bochum and Essen in this area. They also have a kind of a regional development program that they are applying right now. It's called Wir in Sicht Ruhr. And um, it kind of focuses on all kinds of IT security projects with a high degree of innovation. And so the, the important point that I would like to make here that we are still kind of investing in the infrastructure in Northern Westphalia in order to kind of strengthen the, eco the, the ecosystem of cybersecurity even more. And there's another project called Federated Cyber Ranges. It is an international um, project that is still in concept phase, but um, the goal is, and I think this is important, the establishment of a Europe-wide network of cyber ranges. So um, this is also kind of an mission that we have because we can only tackle all those challenges together. Um, the, the implementation or the kind of rollout of a competence center for cybersecurity is another point that I would like to mention because Eurobits and also the cybersecurity cluster are involved in this. And it is um, supposed to give more support for SMEs. You won't be surprised. SME seems to be the focal point of our activities right now. But I think this is exactly right, as there's um, most to be done. And the competence center might um, might give um, or might provide solutions and services such as uh, preventive measures, so that at, um, at the very best nothing happens, but also emergency aids in terms of kind of a reaction if something has happened. Um, and bringing up networking opportunities uh, to, to, to match um, demand and supply, for example, to offer publications, um, particularly in the style that an audience that is not very well informed in cybersecurity yet can still understand it and access those information easily, having events, of course, and bringing up the news also in kind of a target market um, language that everybody can understand. If we look um, at how we might collaborate. I mean, this is, of course, one of the major questions today, I guess, how we can get together, work together and cooperate. I think uh, that you could address us easily if you'd like to uh, have a bilateral cooperation with any kind of, or with any member of cybersecurity cluster of Bonn. If you look at our website, cybersecuritycluster.eu slash en, then you will find an English version of our site, mitglieder, kind of members, our members. Um, there you can have an overview of all those more than 100 members with whom we are happy to bring you in touch with, but also the whole question of how to best transfer cybersecurity know-how into practice in terms of research or actually best practice how to do it. Uh, we are more than open for collaborations also in an international context um, here. Um, the whole topic of e-government and smart cities and cybersecurity, this is also a topic where I can very well imagine corporations. And at the end of the day, if, you, um, if you're looking for a settlement of your company in Northern Westphalia and you look into a, a network, in a very strong network, I think uh, we are kind of the right persons to talk to, of course, uh, in our W Global Business and also the offices of economic de development to whom we have very close uh, corporations and contacts with. They are all very much happy to help. I'm also very much happy to uh, answer any questions that uh, you might have right now. I think we still have two or three minutes, but the 20 minutes are almost taken. So at the end of the day, I thank you very much uh, for um, your attention, and I would be happy to be in touch with you after this little presentation. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Christian. Um, I don't see any questions uh, in the chat here. So again, let me ask you one question, one quick question. You mentioned um, the immunization process in terms of cybersecurity. So if we stick to this uh, picture, let me ask you, what would be the vaccine um, to immunize the um, society, let's say? 
Um, would it be the awareness part that you mentioned? Would it be, um, I don't know, the cooperation, transparency, or what would be the ingredients of the vaccine here? Yeah, I think we need we need different shots if we talk in the terms of vaccine. One shot won't do it all. It is definitely a further development of the technological side because human beings will always make mistakes, open the wrong attachment in an email probably. And the best would be that users would be kind of that users could not make uh, grand mistakes by opening something like that. But we're not close to that um, yet. So it is kind of we have to have a multifactorial approach. On the one hand, it is definitely raising awareness, doing training training and sensitizing uh, people that work in the in the field of digitization and this is practically everybody at the other on the other hand we do have to further develop uh, technology in order to um, in order to protect humans like the user better definitely and um, so, so i think it is technology and the human side and we have to think them on a, in a holistic approach and we have to tackle both and um, we try to we, we try um, our best to bring those realms uh, together okay thank you thank you christian um i would say this concludes the presentation of today and now we have a couple of minutes left for question and answers. We have here one question from earlier. I think we can address this to Thomas. Um, if you're still with us, the question here is, what is the forecast of actual visiting opportunities to NRW? Um, do you think it's realistic that it will be this year or maybe it will be only in 2022? Christian, what is, what is your take on that? Thomas, sorry. I think Sir Thomas take a, a break. I don't, I don't see him. I don't hear him. Uh, and uh, I answer this question. Is okay? Yeah, good. Um, um, just a moment. Yeah, did you see me or did you hear me? Yeah. Do you? Simply. We hear you, but we don't see you. Oh, okay. Good, because I changed the, the uh, laptop on name. Do you see? Okay, it's so good. Um, uh, realistic. Yeah, we have a, uh, we live in very complicated time, and uh, the visiting uh, visit to Nota Vistvela is possible uh, if you have a concrete uh, topic. And we have uh, the possibility, possibility to uh, example to um, to get the appointment in notary or a lawyer or any contacts, but it is not uh, very free. I will suggest to um, to use this time to good preparing. I think so. That's not right. It's from uh, now. Um, in tomorrow to uh, go to Notre Westphalia. That's uh, what I told in my presentation. Uh, the company from abroad need good pre pre preparation. So, and we can help uh, um, uh, you. Uh, we can help uh, to get our cooperation with a uh, colleague from Baltic Scama of Commerce and uh, we will support you. Please take the time for good preparing. And we have now a little time. Use the time. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Elena. This was exactly the right answer. We will, we will support everybody. Um, yeah, Florian. Um, yeah, so let me, mm -hmm. let me uh, fill, fill in on that. Elena, absolutely right. Um, but let's uh, uh, let's uh, my prognosis is that very soon um, actually I would say uh, before uh, summer um, break uh, it will be possible to start with essential business travel um, in fact it is even now possible yeah but uh, as Elena also said, let's uh, let's avoid if it's not um, very, very, very necessary, but let's prepare. And I think um, there will come 
And in fact, tomorrow, um, the, the German government, the federal minister uh, presidents are meeting. They will discuss the further uh, uh, steps for March, um, but I think that uh, in, in May, uh, June, if we are not seeing any more, uh, let's say very bad news, um, business will uh, pick up. And uh, we kind of bank on, on uh, opening in, in uh, autumn season, also with the trade fairs. Of course, uh, with special hygienic uh, concepts and some testing and uh, all of this. And um, yeah, also now when you wanna fly, condition is that you take a, um, a COVID a PCR test um, in both directions. So this is the main requirement at the moment. And you register uh, on digital platforms, both in Germany and on your return uh, in the Baltic states. And uh, upon returning to the Baltic states, you have to um, uh, be in a, in a, a quarantine period. Uh, however, since most of the work is done home office style, um, there is um, not much of a difference, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, you should limit your personal moving, but, um, um, and um, yeah, so that's, uh, that's the situation uh, in the, in the moment, at the moment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Florian, for your take on that. Um, I think we are almost over with our time. Um, but I think it's great to see that so many people stayed with us um, until this point in time now. I think um, this is not um, yeah, um, to be expected from, from everybody since two hours for an online event is already rather long. But I think that we filled it with really good content, very interesting uh, speakers and topics. So thank you very much um, for everybody who contributed today with their presentations, but also to everybody who joined and listened to the presentations. I know I still owe you one short um, comment on the digital matchmaking event that I mentioned earlier. So just for your information that we have organized also together with the support of NRW uh, Global Business, a digital matchmaking event where we gave to uh, the opportunity to 15 Baltic companies to um, connect basically with the German IT companies. It's in the realm of, of IT, uh, cybersecurity, smart city, and so on. And the event is already uh, under full swing. Today in the afternoon, we will start with the matchmaking uh, sessions. They will last um, throughout the whole week. And for this time, now all the places are already gone. So um, all the matchmakings, or most of them, have already been uh, scheduled. But um, <clears throat> I'm pretty sure that we will be um, able to do another round in the future, maybe with a uh, different topic. But if you're interested, then um, yeah, just uh, keep following us. We will reach out to you with the new event once we have planned it and scheduled it, and um, then we will be able to start another round for new participants. So thank you very much to everybody, to NRW Global Business, to you, Florian, for all the speakers. Thank you, and have a great afternoon. Bye-bye. <laughs>